0 and 4. 0 and 4. Losing 5 nothing at home. Things are getting really dire for the San Jose Earthquakes. People are chirping all the way around the club. Everyone's got a, an opinion and who's to blame. This is episode number seven of Black and Azul, and it starts now. Welcome to another edition of Black and Azul alongside Joel Soria, Alex Morgan, Charles Wolin with you here in our studio. How are you guys doing today? Doing pretty well. How are you? I'm all right, mate. Thanks for asking. Fantastic. Happy to be back. Good. Glad to have you. All right. So the Quakes lost 5 nothing at home, their third home loss on the season. You really got to pick points up at home. And suddenly this season is is kind of going down the roller coaster very quickly, very soon, your initial take from Saturday. I think it's fair to say that there were no silver linings on Saturday in terms of the, the soccer aspect of things, right? To me personally, there wasn't a single player who played convincingly well at all. I, I would agree, Joel. I think you know, five nil, the worst ever loss. The Quakes have suffered at Avaya Stadium. There were there were no positives. I, I, I'm struggling to think of a s single player who could legitimately say, "I played well today." Um, you know, in the back line, Daniel Vega, I would say, had a had a decent game. He made some solid stops the, early but on, the but epitome, then he made a mistake. The epitome with with the com the, the howler mm -hmm. just encapsulates this, the 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 current state of the San Jose Earthquakes in one specific sequence, right? Mm -hmm. Tries to clear the ball with his left foot, completely misses it, and it's Carlos Vela, arguably the best player in the league, puts it in the back of the net. But I mean, are you, are you guys really surprised w with this result? I think, you know, we were talking a little bit on Saturday. I think it's more of the way it happened and, and in this way that, that, that was this kind of a Shakespearean almost you know, slow death in, in the match uh, of the team. And, it you know, uh, suddenly 2-0, 3-0 down at halftime, you're like, okay, you know, maybe it's, you know, 3-1 or maybe they keep it at 3-0, but 5-0, 5! Well, it should have been 8. It, it could have easily mm -hmm. been 8. It could have been 9. It could have even, it could have even been 10. The earthquakes looked depleted from that first initial goal. After that, it was all downhill, similar to what we saw from the earthquakes in 2018 psychologically speaking this team hasn't bettered at all yeah they, they, they still suffer the same demons they did last year uh kashio was talking after the game about how after the first goal you know they put their heads down after the second third goal fourth goal fifth goal they started playing like uh, he said it was little kids who are losers uh, i i think that encapsulates it pretty well uh, they haven't managed to rid those demons of you know putting their head down once they allow a goal um, and, and there's not, you know, the, the resilience that the team has been known for. There's no never say die attitude. They haven't been able to, to you know, have that fortitude and in, in resilience. Yeah, you know, I guess anyone, all three of us can point the finger at someone and, and I'm sure all the fans can as well on who's to blame for the current state of the San Jose earthquakes. But I think at some point in time, someone needs to make this known. A lot of it also rests on the players. The players haven't shown uh, any glimpses of of progression on the field, you know, both physically and mentally, like I said before. Mentally, they've been depleted. They've been absent from the game, both physically and mentally as well. You have players like Vaca, who I think we can all agree on, has been absent from the first minute this season. Mm -hmm. He hasn't done anything at all. Yeah, after the first goal, I mean, you saw Chris Wondolowski and, and Vako getting into it and, and uh, Cummings, you know, trying to rally the troops and, and, and try to, you know, get the team into the dressing room while the rest of them were on the field. Um, I, I wouldn't say, you know, all the players are not united with one another, but there seems to be some players that are trying to hold each other accountable in the right way. But when it breaks out on the field, in public, in front of the fans, it can look a little bit suspect and it can look in a way that say to yourself, you know what, <laughs> um, is this team united and is it together? Well, you mentioned accountability and I, I, I think I think it's fair to say, at least from our perspective who cover, cover this team, there's probably three to four players who recognize accountability. Any, everyone else could care less about the status of the team, truthfully. Well, 
I, I would say that you know they were obviously frustrated. You know, losing five nil is a frustrating. No one wants experience. to lose, right? But but I, I would say that after the game, uh, they had a team meeting for probably an hour long. It was the longest we've ever had to wait as media uh, to get into the locker room to talk to the and players. And we've had to wait with Starry before, yeah. maybe 20 to 30 But, but this was like a good hour-long meeting. Uh, and they talked about it afterwards, about how they f worked through the result, they flushed it out, you know, they, they started to analyze and digest those emotions, uh, you know, and Almeida talked to his team about how, how they need to change going forward. Uh, and I think from, from what we heard at the, the press conference they held today from the players is that um, that message has brought them back together, that, that thus far I think they are still a united group that are um, you know, confident in the process going forward under Almeida. Speaking of players and speaking about players who actually feel the passion for the colors and for the badge, two of those players who I think have had the connection with San Jose from the start are Danny Husen and Florian Youngworth. And both players have been absent from the starting 11 since the start of the season. This needs to change. Danny Husen and Florian Youngworth should be playing, should be starting, should be key contributors to this team come as early as this Saturday against Portland. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, I agree. Any change is good change for this team, and why not throw them out there and What's give them a go? I mean, they have to at this point. Especially and also, Danny Husen. Absolutely. I mean, look, Danny yeah. Husen, you're, you're returning top scorer. Um, he hasn't really had a look at the starting position yet. And Chris and Wondolowski hasn't had a single shot on goal all mm -hmm. season after four games. I would think Wanda would be the first person to tell you that he's been extremely disappointed with how he's played so far. You know, not having a single shot on goal, it, it, you know, I, I think that's probably he's not, he's not working the worst out Wanda's the played in his career, you know, at least since 2012. Yeah, and he's the he's the guy that uh, you know five nil is going to affect the most. It's not a one nil loss or a two nil loss or a you know they try to even five nil. I mean, he was very emotional with the fans after Joel. You and I kind of spoke about that before you know uh, speaking with him in the dressing room. But uh, you know he he's he's emotionally attached to this team. Of course. Now I do have to ask the question. You know how do the Quakes? manage Wando going for this goal record not having a lot of service in the area and then having Denny Hoosen who they've clearly marked out as their striker going forward how are they managing minutes here what if Denny Hoosen does start catching fire and then you kind of have to manage Wando in a way that's a good question I think that's probably the question that has had Matias Almeida in this 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 quandary right where he doesn't know whether he wants to get rid of the player who has that hierarchy value or if he wants to slot in Danny Husen. I, I think he's convinced that he can only choose one or the other. I know there's been some some fans and, and just people in general who've been wanting to see a system where both Chris Wondolowski and Danny Husen both take the field, but I think it's impossible with the way that Matias Almeida is trying to play. Well, Al Almeida is sticking to his guns. You know, he oh, he's has not changing his style. He, exactly, he, he has a style that he wants to style. play, and he's made it very clear that you know, even though they're they're suffering, he is going to work through those issues and stick to his guns and stick with that style. And that style only allows him to play one center forward. And I think that Wondolowski is you know is the ultimate team player and, and sort of the ultimate leader for for the Earthquakes. So you know. He, 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 he offers a lot going forward, but in terms of goals right now, you know, he hasn't been cutting it. But see, going back to what I was speaking about, Matias Almeida has played this game right, and he's played at the highest levels, and he, he comprehends passion. Passion for your team, especially for the one that has given you everything. And I think he has, he obviously senses that in Chris Wondolowski. He respects that. He, re he respects his status within the club, within the team. I mean, he is, he is, the physical, you know, resemblance of the black and blue. And and that's, I think, what has had himself second-guessing. But I truly believe that we need to see changes and changes start with implementing Danny Hughes into the starting 11. Well, and, and look, Matias talked about this week at his, uh, at his weekly press conference, he talked about, you know, any player who is not committed to this process and is not committed to the team should get out, shouldn't be a part of the project. And I think the trouble is that with Danny and Wando, you have two players that are committed to this project. So being able to fit them in both is a conundrum. But LAFC in this game were simply fantastic, uh, to be honest. Carlos Vela with 
uh, a hat trick. Uh, he leads the league in goals. He's clearly uh, killing it in the league. And they're a fun team to watch, and they've done well with their branding. They've done well with their uh, makeup of the team. Uh, and they clearly have the infrastructure to compete uh, in Major League Soccer. And, um, you know, you can kind of root for them in a, in, a, in, a, in a neutral way. Like well, I was telling <laughs> you guys before we started filming, if LAFC were to get transported to the EPL, they can pull it off. Okay, I'm not, I'm not speaking about the quality on the field, because obviously that would be five steps behind the quality of the EPL, but the infrastructure is there. They have the stadium, they have the training facilities, they have all the resources, they have the logistics down as well. This team, poses as a top flight team and yeah it's it's paying dividends now they're they're in a league where they're head and shoulders above everyone else we saw that obviously firsthand they have carlos vela who could have been san jose's a couple years ago for for a fraction of the price that they were wanting to get isaac Brizuela for and you know this is what happens when you have ambitious owners this is what happens when you actually have a bulletproof blueprint. Well, and that's the thing that, you know, Matias is really focusing on building with the Quakes. You, you have to have the infrastructure. Before you have a team that competes, you have to have the infrastructure to build a roster, to build the club. Uh, and that's, I guess, where the juxtaposition would be with LAFC in the Earthquakes. You know, with LAFC, you have a team that has really invested in the ground up in building this club. And right now, the Earthquakes are in the process of you know, sort of reassembling pieces, tearing pieces down, and, and building up the infrastructure from, from the start under uh, Jesse Fiorinelli and Matias Almeida. And, and, and right now, I think that... Sorry to crush know. your dreams, but the infrastructure has already been built for the earthquakes. Aside from the academy complex, which is in doubt, we don't... What else is this team going to add? I mean, the stadium's there. They, they have the academy. The academy obviously has... I think, you know, in, in terms of quality has increased exponentially. That aspect, they're doing fine. Everything else, though, they're, they're, they're behind. They're behind these new additions, and, right? And this brings up the, the debate of an MLS 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, 5.0, whatever point oh that, you got, that everyone wants to talk about on Twitter. The Quakes have clearly become a victim of having folks talk about this is MLS 4.0 or this is MLS 5.0 or this is MLS 6.0. Matias Almeida you know, said th it those, best. Those types of things. And Matias Almeida did say it best. You're right. Let's go to that clip now. We are at the par of them. We are much more down. Now, that's why we want to have a style of play so that the team plays in a team and not individually. We don't have a Vela that makes three goals today. And you never have it? Never know. Maybe it's one day, maybe it's one day. Entonces somos optimistas en eso, pero más que nada en poder recuperar eh, algunas mentalidades que están muy frágiles. And there you see Matias Almeida talking about LAFC, LA Galaxy, and Atlanta basically being in front of the earthquakes in terms of their makeup on the field, in terms of their branding, in terms of their fans, that those clubs are a little bit more important. Um, and where do you see this? Yeah, they're much more important, and they're much more relevant, and they're much better on the field, off the field. We saw it. LAFC traveled with over a thousand fans. I have not heard Avaya Stadium roar as loud or shake as much. It was an amazing atmosphere, and you know, Earthquakes fans can say whatever they want to say, but LAFC are doing things right, and unfortunately. You know, they are a rival or they're starting to become a rival. And unfortunately, we have to use them as an example. But the juxtaposition was set in stone for us. You see the earthquake struggling on the field. You see LAFC doing things right, obliterating the earthquakes. And then in the stands, putting, you know, the earthquakes to shame at home. These are the differences. These are the realities in MLS. And you say that. You know, they're becoming a rival for earthquakes, but right now, more or less in the Western Conference, they are unrivaled. You know, you mentioned the traveling support that they brought. From the press box, when the fans did their cheers where they were jumping up and down, you could literally see the Avaya Stadium roof shaking up and down. So that kind of atmosphere, that kind of support uh, is something that's just not been here in San Jose. Uh, and you haven't seen because you haven't had the success on the field and you haven't had the, the infrastructure there in the club.
Yeah, and you could feel actually that reverberating all the way around the rest of the the stadium, and uh, Robert Jonas an actual tweeting, earthquake. Yeah, an actual earthquake, and Robert Jonas tweeting out about it, and yeah, it shows that they've put time into branding, they've put uh, significant time into getting the right sponsorship deal uh, with YouTube, and you saw fans all across the stadium have Vela jerseys, uh, you know, all sorts of. LAFC jerseys, and so that club is is clearly uh, far and above um, just doing everything right, as uh, as you as you said, Joel. And from an earthquakes perspective, it, it is extremely disappointing. It's a it's, wake up call. It's a disappointing thing, um, you know, for for earthquakes fans to to see that I and lose five nil to that team as well. I mm -hmm. think it was also a slap in the face and a wake up call and a cold bucket of ice to all the Quakes officials who were in attendance at that game, that this could be a reality within this state. You can be an LAFC, you can be an Atlanta United, you could even be an FC Cincinnati if you do things right. But I'm not so sure that you can be able to to be those teams right now if you're the Quakes, because the Quakes fall into a, a specific category with the Chicago's and the Dallas's of the world and even in some aspects the New York Red Bulls because of the fact that they are a legacy team the team was taken away from town then given back as an expansion franchise they fall into those buckets and so those things that they need to do clearly are getting the team well, right on if you marginalize getting, yourself to that specific zone then you're going to be that but if you think ambitiously look, we're in one of the biggest sporting markets of the world you drive up 101, who do you have? You have the San Francisco 49ers with Jimmy Garoppolo. You go east, you have the Golden State Warriors with two of the most important basketball players of our generation. You have the San Francisco Giants who've built a legacy with Bruce Bochy. And then you have the Oakland A's which obviously have mirrored that same effect that the earthquakes have had. But you can break and out here's of the wall. And you also have the Latinos. Here's why the, the Oakland A's have mirrored the Quakes. is because they have the same ownership. And the Quakes are never going to be in Atlanta United so, or LAFC. Oh, now, now we're now If you we're have an ownership there, that's not there. willing to invest money into the team, in, in, into getting results on the field. Now, they have invested in Jesse Fiorinelli, and they have invested in, in players in the past. But and some of these players, Almeida, And certainly. Matias Almeida. Certainly. So... You know, and Matias Almeida is sticking to his guns, sticking with his system. If he played a different system, would they potentially be winning? Also, Jesse Fiorinelli, some of the signings as well. So there's a lot of different question marks to go around. But let's bring it back to the LA Galaxies and the Atlantas and uh, the LAFCs. You're right, Joel. The Quakes have work to do in terms of branding and getting their name out there. I, I agree. There's a lot of events, though, in the Bay Area. There's people that are busy. If you look at the New York market, they have two teams, and those two teams, as well, are Struggle. not equally as and full. You're, and you're going to sit here and tell me that L that Los Angeles doesn't offer a lot of things for the people to do? No, I'm 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 sa I'm saying that, but they've yeah they've they've done things right. They've had people in the trenches be able to to get their name out there in an effective, genuine way that's made them want to come back for more. And so that's important, okay. And as someone that used to work for the team that used to sell tickets and sponsorships for the San Jose Earthquakes, that's something that has always been a challenge for this team. And they're still trying to find the right formula, I, and I, that's I, something that that's something that's that's something that's that's that the fans have kind of read in the tea leaves, but also something that's uh, always been a slow roll for them, and they've always been behind, and so that's that's what the quakes are. Well, here's the thing: I think you know you can have people in the trenches trying to generate buzz, but in the end, you know the fans will be there if there's a successful product on the field. Correct. There's only so much you can do to and if to there's spruce more up a players team that's as well, not doing well. You're gonna exactly. Need, you need the players. You need the players with weight, with with an actual profile and the Chicago Fire I've tried something similar with Bastian Schweinsteiger unfortunately the Chicago Fire are going through a thing that is particular to them their stadium is miles away from downtown Chicago mm -hmm. and they deal with some branding issues as well they're changing they're going to revamp the, the the team eventually but you know the San Jose Earthquakes don't have that excuse their their stadium is is central you know it's it's between every, it's so accessible. They have this big market to work with and nothing has come from it. And speaking of a plan, here's a four-year plan from Matias Almeida and let's go to the clip now. 
En realidad quisiéramos mañana. In reality, we want that to be tomorrow. Que, que nuestros hinchas y nosotros poder disfrutar de ver el equipo como deseamos y como hemos planificado. That the fans as well as us could celebrate how we've been planning things out. Evidentemente, cuando uno habla de proyectos y procesos, evidently when one speaks of projects and processes, llevan un tiempo. It takes a time. Eh, la paciencia con la cual tenemos que tener en nuestro juego the patience that we need in our game es la misma que tenemos que tener a la hora de desarrollar un proyecto is the same patience that we need when we need to develop that game nosotros acá estamos entrenando hoy casualmente entrenamos con 10 eh, jóvenes entre 15 y 16, 17 años so today we had 10 youngsters that were between 15 and 16 years old seguramente la gente está viendo el resultado que vemos todo que es negativo. I'm sure the people are looking at the result, which is negative. Pero nosotros estamos proyectando a este club a futuro. But we're projecting this club to the future. Ojalá que lo podamos lograr, que aquellos jugadores que hoy entrenaron dentro de tres, cuatro años sean los titulares de San Jose. Hopefully we can achieve that, that the players we train with today, within three, four years, can be starters for San Jose. Junto a, a nuestro manager y director deportivo, entrevistamos a las familias de estos jóvenes. And with RGM, we, we talk to the family of these youngsters. Cada día que entrenamos, vienen los entrenadores de fuerzas básicas a filmar los entrenamientos. Every day that we train, the coaches from the, the, from the academy come and record our training sessions. Para que de esa manera el proyecto empiece a caminar y que desde los 12 años hasta la etapa que vengan conmigo, jueguen a, en un mismo sistema. That way, our process can be start to take a route and within a couple years we'll be able to make some changes. Entonces, todo eso no es fácil resolverlo en dos meses. And it's not easy to fix all that in two months. El tema por el cual yo vine acá es mucho más profundo que si hubiésemos logrado estos cinco resultados, cuatro resultados. I came here for something much deeper than if we even got these four or five victories. La recta final seguramente será cuela que estoy, aquella que estoy deseando. The final line will be that that I'm, that I'm wishing and the one that I'm visualizing. Cambiar a un equipo y cambiarlo de sistema, cambiarlo de, de costumbres, no es fácil. Changing a system of a team or their habits is not easy. También eso nos va demostrando quién quiere estar y quién no quiere estar. That also will show us who wants to be here and who doesn't want to be here. El que quiere estar y el que no quiere estar no está obligado. The one that wants to be here and doesn't want to be here is not forced. Ellos lo saben porque yo se lo he comunicado. They know this because I've told this. Y el que no quiere estar no tiene que estar y se tiene que ir. No one doesn't want to be here shouldn't be here and should go. Queremos compromiso, el mismo que tenemos nosotros. We want commitment, the same commitment that we have. Que es la única manera que tenemos de resolver situaciones adversas. And that's the only way to resolve adverse situations. Todos juntos. All together. Mm -hmm. bueno. Y la gente también debe apoyar, más allá de que no le estamos dando esa alegría que tiene. And the people should still support, even though we're not giving them that happiness. Tienen que saber que el proyecto es mucho más largo y va a ser mucho más ambicioso de lo que están viendo. They, know, they should know that the process is a lot longer and a lot of more ambitious than they can see. Well, there is a clear show of a plan there from Matias Almeida. He keeps saying four years, four years. You'll be, you'll have to hear me for four years. Right, and there was a lot of buzz about this clip online. Uh, Lexi Lalas was one of the pundits who. Uh, who disparaged uh, the earthquakes for for taking this approach because you know in a league that's built for parity you know not being able to compete for another four years is a little ridiculous but Matias Almeida is looking at this in the long term when when I was on the show last time you know we were talking about uh, I, I was questioning Matias's long-term commitment to the team but I think in the last few weeks uh, he showed me, at least from what I've seen, that he is committed to this team in the long term. After the LAFC loss, um, you know, sometimes his press conferences are a little tricky because of the, the translation situation. Um, and, and so the PR, the Earthquakes PR, they, they don't, you know, they, after a couple questions, it's time for him to go back. But, you know, even after Earthquakes PR, we're, we're, we're trying to pull him, he said, no, I'm here for four years. I will answer the questions. And, and for me, that gesture uh, showed a lot that he's actually here to build this team and is committed to this team, uh, I guess the question turns to whether the Earthquakes fans are willing to wait four years. That, that is the big question. Uh, I, I can make this clear. Matias Almeida is not going anywhere. This is where he belongs. This is pretty much his only opportunity for now, unless he decides to take on a different adventure, maybe in a different continent. He's not going back to Chivas, right? The, 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 the way that things ended up there 
were not good. They're, they're not, the doors aren't open for him there anymore. Uh, as sad as it might be for him, he knows that that uh, epic is, is closed and it's, it's done and it's sealed. Now, Matias Almeida has stressed it time and time again that this is a long-term commitment. Jesse Fiorinelli made that known when they first introduced Matias Almeida, and that's the case. This is a four-year plan. It goes much, much deeper than you know the first four or five results. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of reasons to demand results from the earthquakes. I mean, this is a team that has been a shadow of itself for the last two years. And a major piece of that four-year plan is the academy. And I know I've written about it and I've also spoken about it on here. You know, the academy has exponentially grown it's it's taken huge steps forward which you know before jesse arrived that there there wasn't really an academy you know tommy thompson was was brought in as a first homegrown but i want to say that was more of a pr gimmick than anything else it wasn't a good academy it wasn't a well-rounded academy they weren't bringing up players quick enough into the into the team at all i mean there are play there are teams that were doing laps around the earthquakes well, right uh, but you know, rsl yeah being one of them but, FC Dallas is but a good what example. I'm, what I, yeah, FC Dallas as well. What I'm really concerned about here, though, is, you know, Almeida and, and Jesse himself are really emphasizing the youth, right? The youth movement, the academy movement. I'm afraid that is being said in order to give John Fisher the excuse of not investing into the first team. Well, I think that... Investment in the academy is good. There should be investment well, in the academy. There should be more investment in the academy. And I think that they're showing that. At training uh, these days, the Quakes have but you know, to cover 9, up. 10, 15, 16 year olds training with the first team to give them experience. Here's the problem. You know, 15 year olds are not going to be the solution to the earthquakes problems. Not this year, not next year. Probably not even in two or three years, right? The, the academies just aren't, even European academies, they just aren't that efficient. They aren't that productive. Right, you, you need a strategy, a recruitment strategy, and, and you need to actually invest money in the team to get results on the pitch. Well, that's what I'm trying to say. They're going to use the academy in order to compensate, you know, the first team acquisitions. If you're not getting money, or if you're not willing to put in money for the first team, where do you get it from? If if Fisher isn't going to give it to you, then you get it from selling young players. Well, we all know that the Quakes tried to sign. Brizuela from Chivas, and clearly they were in negotiations with Chivas. Chivas inflated the price, and so the Earthquakes didn't think it was a good investment at the time. There are spots now open on the team. The fans are crying out loud for change. The front office morale is not the highest right now. We could see that in club officials that we interacted with the other day. I'm pretty sure the owner probably gets the... The memo. The memo at this point, and 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 Matias uh, had a conversation with with the owner as well, you know, telling him what what he needs, and so I think that the alarm bells are all sounding here, and I think there's not just one alarm bell, but it's but multiple many... alarms that you set, and yes, they have been behind, and this shouldn't have been the case. This 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 this, in my opinion, should have kind of been taken care of last year when you got rid of Mark uh, Mikel Stare and done a little bit more of a squad overhaul, but the squad overhaul is gonna take some time. Could Charles, there... But how many times have the alarm bells have gone off at the Oakland Coliseum under Fisher? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about the Oakland A's. I think that's a different story when it comes to that. They go they're through running, their own, they go through their own the stuff. If the alarm here. bells aren't going off now, they will be because Earthquakes fans have been planning uh, John Fisher, hashtag John Fisher out protest. A campaign. A, a, an independent fan funded campaign to get John Fisher to sell the team. These are things we see in Europe. I don't think we've ever seen it in MLS, have we? Not I mean, since Columbus. Yeah. yeah. And there may be. That was a different situation, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Different, definitely a different situation. I don't think it'll get to that point, but it's good that the fans are talking about that and that they want to see some change. They want to see movement. I mean, the kind of performances on the pitch have to change. Yeah. I mean, they could go 0 and 10 and we would maybe even still be sitting here or not. I'm not sure, but there's another alarm bell uh, uh, with that. So, yeah, go ahead and hit that alarm, by the way. The, the, the bell, right? The bell. <laughs> <laughs> Ding the notifications bell. to the show. <laughs> well, and here's the tough thing I think the fans want to see results on the pitch. And I asked Matthias today, you know, about the four year plan. 
and essentially he said that, you know, the, the only thing that he can offer it, it, to the fans is, you know, blind faith. They need to have blind faith in him. That's that's not going to fly for for a long time. You know, he, he well, that's hit, what Garam Kasha and Tommy Thompson said as well. If if the if the fans are giving up already after four games, then that's on them. They need to have faith in us. And we go back to this: the patience, patience is thin in San Jose right now for this team. Yeah, and it always has been. It's a historic thing that's just part of the Quakes. It's part of the 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 makeup of the club and what it's gone through Charles, over the you, years. You say this, you say this all the time, but why why does San Jose need to be const, con, you know constricted to this or confined, sorry, confined to this to this ethos, to this mentality? I mean, it's 2019, the league is growing exponentially. Teams are overlapping San Jose and, you know, I, the excuse is going to be that they're the underdog, that they're the blue collar forever. I mean, it, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying that either way. But but I, I am saying that there is a historic uh, part of this franchise that has been up and down and through and thirty five thousand feet and ten thousand well, feet. And I you think know, you could the get... team even taken away. So you know, this is nothing really new for earthquakes fans. Is what it... I'm saying. Right, and right. It's just no, kind I get of you. part. I get of, of it. Is it's extremely sad and it's uh it for 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 fellow fans it's not a, a good look but and I think clearly the, the the alarm bells have been sounded so much this year that and, and a show year. like this where we get a chance to chat about the quakes and discuss it in a balanced cool manner it is doing something to help further uh progress well, look, community and soccer I think, I think, in our that, area. I think that the quakes fans have actually been remarkably resilient and remarkably committed to the team given yeah. the lack of success over the past seven years now and i think it's i think it's fair to, to argue that it's time to break out of that shell yeah. because this team finally has stability I, it you know, makes they sense they're tired of they're they tired of this stadium cycle. or a yeah. three-year-old stadium four-year-old stadium absolutely they're gonna stay here this this is not only the present this is also the future san jose the san jose earthquakes as a franchise are here to stay nothing's gonna change you know that's, that's not going to change. So what needs to happen now is there needs to be accountability and there needs to be changes made. And the team needs to start winning some matches, that pick up all. some points. And the way that San Jose goes about its branding and its marketing and getting its name out there could afford to be able to leach into other areas of the Bay Area and also up their game to step it up to an LAFC or a LA Galaxy or an Atlanta United one There's day. hundreds of thousands of people in the Bay Area who are interested in seeing good soccer and seeing good product on the field. Unfortunately, for the last couple of years, the Earthquakes haven't been able to do that, and they've restricted themselves to a very small market. I think it's time. I think it's time to break out of that mold, to, to break out of that, that philosophy, and, and to reach for something higher. And, and I think, the, you know, that that's what Almeida is trying to do, you know. I, I and I think that I think that's what he's the trying to do. Is trying to a systematic. Well. Yeah. He's trying to do a systematic overhaul of the system. And he talked about in his press conference, you know, changing these habits, changing the culture is hard. But you know, he's starting from the bottom with the academy players and trying to do that. You know, it's a four-year plan. So, and he's really the thing that I would stress the most is that he's really stressed that this is a long-term plan. They're looking at the horizon. They're not looking in the the immediate future. You know. At this point, I think it's already you can write off this season. They're looking at a long-term plan for rebuilding there. the health of this club. Yeah, <laughs> Alex and, went and, there, and let and let's go there for a second. Alexi Lawless with with his comments this week. Uh, Taylor Twelman with his comments this week. Uh, just there's a lot there. Obviously, a lot of it's made for television. They're hot sound bites that they get to sound off on. Bottom team in the entire league this has been the second year running fruit yeah it's low-hanging fruit that they get to pick on and i would say that my read of what almeida is trying to do this season is, is trying to figure out which players are committed to the project that he wants to be a part of the long-term project and which players he should get rid of he's talked and been very clear 
that you know any player who's not committed to the project should get out. He doesn't want them. So I think that's what he's trying to do this season is figure out, and that's why we've seen some rotation in the lineup. And you know, you've seen guys like Tommy uh, getting into the starting lineup because he wants to figure out which guys he can invest in in the long haul. And, and that might not yield results this season, um, you know, especially not if they if they don't, uh, especially if they don't invest over the summer. Uh, but you know that's that's what he's trying to do in the long term. Alex, you're writing the Earthquakes off for this season. I believe that the Earthquakes will still fight for that number six spot if they do things right in the summer. They have two spots open. If they're aggressive, I think two players can make a change here. Two two DPS. It has to be designated players. They have to at least bring one. But if they bring two, I think they would be. In, in a solid spot to compete for that six spot. It's not asking for much. Making playoffs in this league is is not a huge accomplishment, you know, where more than half the teams are making playoffs on a regular basis and there's so much parity, as you said. You know, we're not, no one's asking for the Earthquakes to win the MLS Cup or to qualify for CCL. You know, making playoffs like they did in, in 2017 is not a huge, huge ask. It's the minimum expectation, really. Yeah. In a league where more than half the teams make right. the playoffs, it's the minimum fans right. can ask for. Chance for the Earthquakes to right the ship this Saturday as they play the 11th team in the West. The Quakes, they're 12th in the West. They play against the Western Conference champion from last year, Portland Timbers. We caught up with Tommy Thompson. Here's what he had to say. Uh, one of the most important things for us is... Uh, confidence and the, abil the ability to make precise passes under pressure. So today we did a lot of build up and uh, we're, we're looking to, to, c to control the game and, and in order to do that um, we have to be precise. So we, we really focused on the small details um, this week and we're, we're looking forward to, uh, to changing things against Portland. Alex, chance to pick up some points here? Yeah, I mean I would say this is their best opportunity to pick up some points since the opening day against Montreal. And if they can tighten their defense, if they don't hemorrhage goals like they did against LAFC, um, I think they have a good opportunity to, to finally get some points on the board this year. I wouldn't underestimate Portland Timbers. I know they're struggling now, but I found them to play pretty convincingly against LA Galaxy over the weekend. You know, they have this set core of players that you know, know each other from the past previous seasons, especially last year when, you know, they had a pretty decent season. And they have Diego Valeri, who at any moment can just, you know, score two or create uh, two goals. You know, he's he's just a determining player, just like Ignacio Pietti was. I think heading into that game against Montreal, a lot of people thought, you know, maybe the Earthquakes can go on go on and have, have a good start to this season. I, I see that that same scenario with with the Portland Timbers where they might people might think they're susceptible and game time comes around and the Portland Timbers are a completely different team than what they've been all season and what people projected them to be before the game. Look, I, I don't think this will be a situation. Against LAFC, the Quakes were simply outclassed in every facet of the game. They were outplayed, they were out out out, you know, they, they were tactically outmaneuvered, and they were just simply outclassed. That won't be the case against Portland. So I think it's it's more on the Quakes. If they can cut out the defensive errors, you know, if they can play with diligence at the back and not, you know, you, you had the, them concede like at least five or six one-on-one -on -one chances straight down the middle against LAFC because they're making errant passes and they're they're you know not checking over their shoulder. If they can cut out those mistakes, in, you know, if they can keep a clean sheet, uh, that's probably asking a lot. Um, because their defense, at least the record, has gotten progressively worse so far. Two goals against Montreal, three against Minnesota, um, four against the Red Bulls, five against LAFC. You know, if they can reverse that trend, uh, I think they have a, a good shot. It, and then it goes to, you know, if they can get points on the board, if they can get goals in the net. Well, they're going for, they're going to try and replicate that first half against the Red Bulls. But they're going to try and, you know, obviously duplicate that because one, one half isn't enough. But like I said, you know, the Portland Timbers who haven't won this season are also coming into this game thinking, hey, this is our chance to win Absolutely. against the worst team in the league who are extremely vulnerable right now. You right, know? and it, it almost pits the question, which team, who, who, who really wants it more, this, this bottom of the Western Conference table type of ordeal, almost kind of like a proper 
relegation <laughs> six pointer, <laughs> which I which I really like to say. And, and to be honest, the pressure is also on the Portland Timbers because their fans are also clamoring for the same thing, just like the Earthquakes. I think it definitely matters more to the Earthquakes than to Portland right now. Uh, you know, but what do you make of that? Yeah, I I think I think the Portland Timbers might want it more though. The way that they played against uh, Galaxy, you know, they they showed spirit on the field, which is contrary to what the Earthquakes have shown on the field. The, the, I'm not saying that the Earthquakes are blowing smoke right now, but that's what it seems like. You know, they they talk a, a lot after the game, and Wando and, and Garam Kasha said it best. You know, it's 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 time to quit talking and let action speak for itself. But what you know, it it's gonna be it's gonna be a tighter match than mm -hmm. the previous Earthquake games yeah 11th versus 12th i mean they, they played the first place team it, it you know in the conference and, and lost five nil alex i agree with you completely outclassed and then i think they just threw in the towel because they mm -hmm. didn't really here's care. the thing though here's the didn't thing care anymore if the earthquakes lose against portland on saturday then things really start going downhill because they have sporting kc and they have the houston dynamo who are playing really well right now up next in their schedule there's a solid chance, and I've said this before as well, first seven to eight games, the Earthquakes could go without gaining any points, and that is disastrous. Period. Yeah, I mean, it's There's getting... There's nothing else. That's, it, that's bad. It's terrible. It's going from moderate to severe turbulence. So and, when, and when it gets there, <laughs> if the players can't convince themselves psychologically, what's going to happen then? It, this couldn't have been a part of the four-year plan. And if they don't start showing progress in results, then there's going to be more and more pressure put on Almeida. Yeah, absolutely. I, I heard a fan screaming, Matias out, Fisher out. Well, there's a banner. A, there's a, a, a Fisher out with banner a, with at a the scarf. stadium. But, but the way that this fan was leaving the stadium, the shriek was heard from all sorts of fans uh, getting concessions. And the shriek, I, I can't really describe it in words but it was this shriek that echoed through the hallways of, of the stadium and, and it, I, I, I've never heard anybody uh, scream like that at, at an earthquakes game if they weren't in trouble and, and, and had a medical condition question so of the night it was, guys. It was intense. question, question yeah. of the night question of the night is it time to pitch a Sunderland-esque <laughs> series to Netflix on the San Jose <laughs> well I mean, I'd, watch TSL it. I'd watch it I mean, Matias Almeida is a very animated guy, and these players, some of them, you know, really clearly care about the club. Some of them are just kind of coming through as a Talk destination. Talk about a great marketing tool. Yeah. If the team needs resources, if they need financial backing to sign a couple of players, Netflix would gain them a lot of traction and a lot of money. Losing 5-0, 0-4 on the season. Netflix is our ending point for this wonderful episode. <laughs> it could be the savior. Episode number seven of Black and Azul. Alex Morgan, Joel Soria, Charles Wolin here with you. Make sure that you tell a friend and tell that friend to tell another friend about Black and Azul. Feel free to comment, like our page, subscribe, and we will see you next week.